In this video, we're going to be discussing one of the special tests used in the assessment of rib hypomobility, and that is rib spring testing. We're eventually going to look at an actual patient demonstration here, but before we do that, I'm going to demonstrate this on my skeleton model. So right here we have Steve the skeleton, and Steve is lying in the prone position, and just for reference up here is superior, and down here is inferior on the thoracic spine. Now right now his arms are by his sides. This poses a problem if we are rib spring testing or mobilizing depending on the context. And that's because when the arms are by the side like this on the table, the scapulas are retracted, meaning they're closer to the midline. And that's a problem because when we spring test or mobilize the ribs, our contact points are medial. Okay, right where the ribs come off of the corresponding vertebrae. And that means that the scapulas more or less are gonna block those positions. So the first thing we actually need to do is we need to actually dangle the arms off of the side of the table like this. Now, obviously this is a fixed skeleton. The scapulas are nailed tight, but in a real person, they would actually protract. They'd move away from the midline and that would more expose the contact points for these upper ribs, particularly two, three, four, five, six, and to some extent, seven. All right. Now I'm standing on Steve's left side, which means I'm gonna be testing or mobilizing ribs on his right. The rule of thumb here is that you always stand on the side opposite of the ribs that you're moving. And today I'm gonna to be focusing here on rib number eight. That being said, where am I supposed to contact rib eight if I'm expecting to move it? Am I out here laterally, way in here medially? Well, if we follow this rib, rib eight on the right, from lateral to medial, we come to a point approximately right there where my index finger is. And this is the posterior most protrusion of the rib, meaning if you actually had a live person right here with skin, soft tissue, everything, this would be where you'd feel it the most prominently. It sticks out the farthest posteriorly. It's the most superficial, in other words. But then, if we imagine a vertical line right here, going just medial to that, we have all the erector spiny muscles, okay? And so if we continue to go medially here, the rib is actually gonna course underneath or deep to the erector spiny muscle group as it goes towards the transverse process here. That is the right transverse process of T8, okay? So bottom line, my contact point for the rib is going to be just lateral to the transverse process here where the rib courses deep to the erector spiny muscles. Now, if I come in here and start trying to mobilize this rib or test its mobility, notice here I'm just getting rotation of the whole spine. The rib's kind of just going with the spine. So how do I know if that's actual rib movement? meaning normal mobility, or if it's movement of this whole complex. You don't know, right? So that means I'm gonna to have to stabilize on this other side, okay? And it turns out that I'm actually gonna stabilize the transverse process on the other side at the same level. So rib eight right here articulates with the right transverse process of T8. That means I need to stabilize the left transverse process of T8. And I'm gonna do that with hypothenar contact, so right on the pisiform, okay? So I'm gonna come in here, and notice my hand is actually going parallel with the spine. This is my stabilizing hand. I need to have this anytime I rib spring or mobilize, okay? My testing or mobilizing hand is gonna be perpendicular to my stabilizing hand, and I'm gonna use hypothenar pisiform contact right in this area of the rib, lateral to the transverse process where it goes underneath the paraspinals. So just like that, okay? And my fingers point in the direction that I'm gonna try and move the rib, anterior and lateral, okay? Notice that I really have to apply a stabilizing force here because if I'm kind of just resting my hand there doing this haphazardly, again, I get that whole rotation there. I need to stabilize at that left transverse process of whatever level I'm dealing with. That way, if I'm getting mobilization here or if I'm getting movement, I know that it's movement of the rib at the costal transverse joint and not this whole complex, okay? I can also go on to different levels. Let's go to rib nine here. Now I need to move down to the transverse process on the left here for T9. 
and stabilize there. Now I can mobilize rib nine here. And so on and so forth. All right, now back to the patient demonstration. The patient will be in prone with their arms hanging over the sides of the table. You can't really see the arms hanging too much here, but again, the reason we put them in that position is it draws the scapulas away from the midline. If her arms are by her sides on the table here, then the scapulas would be in a retracted or we would say a deducted position. They'd be close to the midline and we wouldn't be able to spring test the upper ribs, so ribs two through five, let's say, because the scapula would be in the way. We put the arms over the side to move the scapula out of the way, to put them into protraction or abduction, and that allows us access to the medial portions of the upper ribs so that we can spring test those. The arm position really doesn't affect the lower ribs as much, but we do have to test the upper ribs if we suspect there's a hypomobility or other dysfunction. Now the PT will stand on the opposite side as the rib being mobilized or tested. So for example, if I'm testing the mobility of the right seventh rib, I'm going to stand on the patient's left side. Now important note here, I don't just want to randomly test ribs, I want to be accurate with my hand placement. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually find her midline by finding her spinous processes. And note that for a patient wearing a sports bra, you can't necessarily trust the midline of the sports bra because the bra may have shifted when the patient got on the table. So you wanna make sure you accurately find the midline by finding the spinous processes. And then once you know where the midline is, you can find the painful and potentially hypomobile rib. Now, once you locate the rib to be assessed, you have to remember that as you go lateral out here to medial, there's gonna come a point right where my finger is right there where the rib becomes most prominent. It sticks out the most posteriorly. It's the most superficial part of it. But then as you go more medially, the rib is gonna dive down deeper underneath the erector spiny muscles. And then right around the point where it goes underneath those erector spiny muscles, that's where it's gonna articulate with the transverse process of the thoracic vertebra, okay? right around where it dives underneath the erector spiny muscles, that's where you want to sink down and contact the rib. We will see that in more detail in just a minute. So I'm assessing mobility of the right seventh rib, which articulates with the right transverse process of T7. If I just simply push on the right seventh rib without stabilizing anywhere else, I'm gonna get movement most likely, but is it movement of the rib relative to the transverse process here? Or is it just overall rotation of T7? It's probably overall rotation of T7, but I don't want T7 to move at all. So I need to stabilize T7 from the other side on its left transverse process. And so it's gonna look something like this, okay? So I'm gonna have pisiform contact or hypothenar contact right here on the left transverse process of T7. That way, when I eventually push on rib seven, if there's movement there, I can be sure that it's movement of the rib relative to the transverse process, and that would be uh, normal mobility. And then I'm gonna take my other hand, which is the testing hand, and position it perpendicular to the stabilizing hand, so point it out here to the right, with pisiform contact on the hypomobile rib, which is the right seventh rib. Now remember, my finger right here was pointed at the most prominent aspect of that rib. It came most superficially, right? And then as I went more medially, it dipped back underneath the erector spiny muscle group. The contact point with my pisiform is right where it goes underneath the erector spiny muscles, okay? Because that is just lateral to the right transverse process. Let's take a look at that. And then finally, once you have this positioning, you're gonna allow the testing hand to sink through the soft tissue, so through the erector spiny muscles, to contact that rib. And then you're gonna assess the rib movement by trying to move it in the anterior and lateral direction. That will look like this. So sink through the soft tissue there, and then move anterior and lateral. Fingers point in the direction of the test. We can then move up a level and test rib six. 
In any case, a positive rib spring test is going to be hypomobility compared to the unaffected side and compared to adjacent non-affected levels and familiar pain provocation, which will typically occur in a unilateral parasagittal pattern. Thank you for all your support. Be sure to check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff.